Okay, so next is antifungal. First of all, there is a gross difference of fungal cell membrane and bacterial cell membrane. Fungal cell membrane is made up of ergosterol. So the drugs which we'll be using in fungus cannot be used in bacteria because of difference of target, right? Let's talk about amphotericin B. What does amphotericin B do? It drills the hole in the cell membrane of the fungi. So everything will leak out and the fungus dies, right? It is reserved for severe systemic infection because of its side effect like nephrotoxicity, right? Can be used in rickettsia and some protozoal infection like leishmania, right? Now the problem with amphotericin B is when you inject amphotericin B, it will cause histamine release from mast cell. So you'll have a sort of allergy. To avoid this, either infuse amphotericin B slowly or use liposomal amphotericin B, which is best. It will release amphotericin B slowly. Or you combine amphotericin B with flu cytosine so that you can use less dose of amphotericin B. But the best is liposomal amphotericin B. It will release amphotericin B slowly. Other drugs like fluconazole and ketoconazole inhibit the ergosterol synthesis, right? and it can be used in dermatophycosis or candidial infection. So amphotericin B toxicity can be lowered by using liposomal delivery system. You can also combine with flu cytosine but the best is liposomal delivery system. Also liposomal delivery system is costlier. Because the following is caused by amphotericin B. It causes hypokalemia because it, it is nephrotoxic. Amphotericin B is used in treatment of all except staphylococcal cell membrane is not made up of ergosterol. So there is a difference of target, right? Which drug would treat both dermatophycosis and candidial? Remember we talked about this drug in enzyme inhibitor, COG-NP. Here it was ketoconazole, right? So it can be used in both. 